If you've ever tried to place two buttons next to each other in Squarespace, then you know what a giant pain in the butt it is and that they never look good on tablet and smaller screen sizes. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you the best way to place two buttons next to each other so that they look good across every screen size. So what is the alternative? Well, the alternative is to just copy the button structure and kind of create our own multi-button block is what I'm gonna call it. And the way that we can do that is right clicking on a button and clicking inspect. Squarespace blocks are just HTML elements. So here we have the button block. And if I toggle that closed, so everything inside of this button block is the HTML that makes up that component. So if we were to just copy this HTML into a code block, we would then have our button appear exactly as it does as a button block, except then we would be able to control display settings so that we can place two next to each other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come to the SQS button, uh, block button container, because we don't need this outer container or this outer container. Really all we need is this element and this element because these are what make up our buttons. The SQS block content container, it, it doesn't have any CSS properties on it, so it's just kind of a container class. Here is where we get all of our animation information. So here you can see we have all of our transition information. So if you have animation set up for your Squarespace site, we want our code block buttons to also inherit that. And then we definitely need the link itself because this has all of the color and styling information and also it's how we're gonna be able to actually click the button. So if I click on this SQS block button container element and highlight it, three dots will appear. And if you click on those and then click copy, copy outer HTML, we can then get like a blank notepad document. And I'm just gonna go ahead and paste this HTML into the notepad. Now there's a lot of information here that we don't need. For example, we don't need to denote that this button block is left aligned. We don't need this pre-fade or fade in information that's automatically given by the animation setting. We don't need the data alignment left. We don't need the data button size large. We don't need the data button type secondary, and we don't need this ID, which Squarespace just dynamically generates. And we also don't need these dynamically generated styles because once the button block loads in, Squarespace will give them those because we are gonna leave the data animation role button. So this tells the animation engine, hey, this is a button, even though it's not in a, a button block, it still should be treated as a button and given all of the button animation styles. Now here on the link itself, we don't need the uh, block button large. Uh, we do wanna keep the secondary, this is important. This will style it as either your primary, secondary, or tertiary button. And then we definitely want this block button element as well because that um, inherits a lot of these styles that style it as a button, such as the padding, color, all of that. We don't need this data initialized true and we don't need the ID. So we've really kind of simplified the button block down to its core here. And what we could do if we want two button blocks is just copy this and then paste another button block down below. But we need to put them inside of a container so that we can give this container a display of flex that will place the two buttons next to each other. So I'm gonna start a div container here and I'm gonna give it a class of multi button. And then we'll close the opening div tag. And whenever you open a div tag, you have to close the div tag like so. So now I can take this HTML that I've written here and I can place it in a code block, deleting our two buttons that we put in previously. So I'll delete those, add block, and I'll drag in a code block. Okay, so I'm gonna stretch out the code block really wide because we want a lot of room for our buttons to live side by side. And then I'll delete the default HTML in there and paste in our HTML. So the cool thing is, because these both have the secondary styling, you can see both of them are being styled as secondary buttons. So if I were to change this to primary, which I have set up as my outline button, you can now see that that is automatically updating 
to appear like my primary button. So now we just need to target our container class, this multi-button class, and give it styles in order to make sure that these buttons are side by side in this container. So let me save and exit, and I'm gonna go to design and then my custom CSS window, and I'll just move that stuff down and start at the very top. I'm gonna target my multi-button container. And now I'm going to give it a display of flex. And that automatically aligns things next to each other. But if we don't have enough room, we also want these items to be able to wrap. So that'll let, once there's not enough room in this container for the buttons to be side by side, uh, the, the items will stack on top of each other. Now we can also set a gap here. So this is nice. Um, we can set the amount of space that we want in between them. So we have total control over uh, this like fixed value. So it doesn't matter how big or small the screen is, the buttons will always be 20 pixels away from each other, which is great. And there you go. You can see when there's not enough room for these buttons to be side by side, they automatically stack on top of each other, which is pretty sweet. And that's the reason that I wanted to drag out the code block pretty wide because if your code block is really small, there's not gonna be enough room for the buttons to be side by side, and they're just like always gonna be stacked on top of each other, which is obviously not what we want. So just make sure you give your button container enough you know, breathing room. So the next thing that we can do is uh, we can choose to center or right align these buttons. So basically we wanna set up some properties to be able to control that. So like, for example, if we wanted these buttons to be centered, then we can add a class of center to that element. And now we can say, when the multi-button block also has a class of center, we'll give it a justify content of center. And using Flexbox, this is how you like horizontally align items in the container. So by default, it'll align them to the start of the container, but we can justify them to the center of the container. And then we can also set up a class here or if we give it a class of right, we could justify them to the flex end of the container. So now if I were to edit this button block and add a class of right, we should see them jump to the end of the container. Let's see. Yep, so as soon as I hit save, you can see they're now at the end of the container. One thing that I am noticing is when I hit edit, the buttons are jumping on top of each other. And if I right click, we can kind of see why that's happening. So if I open up these elements here, we can see that when the window has a class of SQS edit mode active, so when we're actively editing the page, it's uh, looking for the SQS block button container class. Um, so that was our outer wrapper, and it's giving it a width of 100%. So that's not something we want. We don't want it to get 100%. And if I get rid of that, then you'll see the buttons in edit mode go back uh, next to each other. So basically what we're gonna do is we're just going to say when this is true, but we're also in the multi-button container, then we're gonna set the width to unset. So we're basically gonna say, you know, don't set it to 100% because we want our buttons to be next to each other. So basically I'm gonna copy this rule here and we're gonna override it in the custom CSS window. So let me go ahead and paste that in. Um, now our multi-button block is within these two containers. So an ampersand when it's inside the curly brackets of another element just basically says, you know, whatever's here, place it here. So this is saying look for multi-button dot center. And here the multi-button element is within the edit mode active, and it's also within the fluid engine container. So if I put an ampersand here. Within these two elements, it's going to look for the multi-button block, and then it's going to look for the button container, and now we can set the width to unset. So if I edit it, we should see these buttons perfectly. Uh, that's exactly what we want. They stay next to each other, and they don't stack. All right, so sweet. So that's our multi-button block. You can change the styling really easily here. So if you wanted this to be tertiary, you can do that as well. And now it's styled like the tertiary button. In terms of updating the, the text in the button, that's done here. So you can call this whatever you want and you'll see it update on the page. And then in terms of the click through, so this just takes a page slug. 
So if I wanted this to go to the about page, I would do slash about. If I wanted to go to the contact page, slash contact. And so now these are actually working buttons, which is really cool. And the really cool thing is they also adhere to the animation style. So you can see they actually fade in with the rest of the content on the page because we left that uh, data animation mode button property on the container. So this code is going to be linked in a blog post in the description below this video. So really all you have to do is add a code block to the page. You'll paste in this multi button block uh, HTML. You'll change your button text. You'll change your page slug URL and then decide what style of button you want to give it. And that's it. You're good to go. So here, as I shrink my window down, you can see the buttons are next to each other and then they stack and go next to each other. And then as the mobile screen gets smaller, they'll stack on even smaller mobile sizes. But that's the best way to place two buttons next to each other. Totally responsive, very easy to manage and you can quickly add this to a code block on your site. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching and I hope it was helpful. If it was and you want more Squarespace content like this in the future, consider subscribing to the channel and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.